Hey everyone, welcome back to Metroid Prime. Last time, we got the X-ray visor right up there for reference of our location. Uh, we got the X-ray visor, we got the grapple beam, and we got the... What else did we get? We got something else. Power bombs! We got power bombs. So today, we're just gonna go around the world town floor for now and get as many items as we can with what we have. There is one required item we do have to go get, but there's some extra stuff as, as well. Like this missile expansion, we can get now with the X-ray visor. Uh, although you technically didn't need the extra riser to get it because the platform uh, we can see is invisible we can sh But we can shoot it and also the rain powers off of it. We can shoot it to see it and we can just jump on it and jump over there even without the extra riser But it's easier to get now and you have to get the extra riser anyway So it's not really a reason to do that because it's not really getting it that much earlier uh, without the extra riser and today we're just gonna head up here it's just very much to the charts of ruins i don't really have a plan or a plot um what am i trying to say like um a path 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 is the word a path laid out for this episode i'm just sort of gonna go and uh get items that appear uh there's nothing in here we actually need to go this is going to the furnace, well, sort of. We do need to go to the Hall of the Elders now that we have the ice beam, though, so... That's going back there. Motherfuck. That's going back there and... Stupid doors. Nothing's going well. But yeah, now that we have the ice beam, every time you get a new beam, you want to go back to the Hall of Elders, and we're going to have to put a Chozer Ghost, I'm sure. Right? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Uh, the x rays actually make Chozer Ghost really easy. I believe I've mentioned this before. That is weird. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Um, because you can see them forever, so you don't have to worry about, uh, waiting for them to appear or anything. You can just land a super missile on them and a charge shot, and they're down. And this is one of the few rooms you will absolutely need to deal with the Chozer Ghosts, because they will not let you progress until they are defeated. It's so annoying, because... Where the fuck did you go? Uh, but it's a... They're not... They're just a nuisance. They're not hard to kill. They're just a nuisance. And I really wish you didn't have to deal with them. I think Prime 2 does have something similar, and there is, I think they're even more annoying in that game, if I remember hearing correctly, because the doors lock until you defeat them, or something? Which, oh god, that that's literally the one good thing about Trozer Ghosts, is you can just skip the fights. You don't have to fight them for any reason. It really emphasizes how Metroid Prime is not a shooting game, it's a first-person adventure game with first-person elements, or first-person shooting elements. You know, like the fact that it's a first-person game where you shoot things, generally. But other than that, it really has nothing to in common with Halo and Call of Duty and stuff like that. Anyway, energy tank for that, if you use the Ice Beam in the Hall of the Elders. Which is nice. Um, it's easy for you. More fun to get out of here. Anyway. And we do have to go to the Furnace, now that we have power bombs to get another power-up. Uh, around this time of the game, it's where you can get power-up roundup. Uh, that sounded better than I expected, I suppose. Uh, we can just get a bunch of power-ups at once, because uh, you just have so many more items. There's only really two more big items that we're going to get, or two more items that even would affect getting uh, power-ups, and then we can start doing hunting. Oh, son of a bitch! I forgot they're in this room, too. Fine. Uh, <laughs> I hate Chozer Ghosts. I don't know if Prime 3 is something similar, I hope not. Even then, I know there's like hyper mode in Prime 3, so it probably wouldn't be a big deal if there were. Uh, we do need to scan these things as well, which are gonna be, what, plated parasites? Okay. I think there was the ice one that we scanned a while ago in the Fendrana Drifts. But over here, there's gonna be a crack in the ground, I think you can see it, can see through it with the X-ray visor. So it just goes away, and reveals a half pipe that we can go up to get to the spider ball tracks. Event eventually. Anyway, uh, so, it's, I, I completely forgot to mention this at any point in the, uh, LP, but, uh, apparently, ap apparently, uh, it is Metroid's 30th anniversary this year. Uh, the series has been around for 30 years. I can't remember the exact date Metroid 1 came out, but, uh, yeah, which is pretty great, because Metroid's a great series for the most part, besides, um, a few games. Like, the first one. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Uh, but yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of the original Metroid game, and I'm the biggest fan of a lot of NES games, like, uh, mainly the, the noteworthy ones, like Contra and Super C for that, in that, uh, regard. Mario 1 is actually really good, it's aged really well. All things considered, at least. 
Uh, what's it? Mario 3, of course. What other ones? Kir I haven't played Kirby's Adventure, actually, the first Kirby game. Nor have I played its remake um, for the GBA, so I have no experience with that. I hate this because, okay, it's really hard to see your shadow there, so I can't tell where I'm supposed to drop it all that leads to a missile expansion. Uh, I can't really think of any other NES games that I, I like. I'm sure there are others, but I can't think of them right now. Uh, but yeah, the original Metroid, eh, it's not aged well. And by extension, the original Metroid 2 has not aged well. However, the fan remake, uh, another Metroid 2 remake, is technically out. Um, by that, I mean it's not really available super easily anymore. Because Nintendo took down the website hosting it. Which, I mean, they're fully in the legal right to do so, but... I don't know, it's... I don't know if I'm mad at them, or I, I'm, like, indifferent, because they are fully in their legal right to do so. I really don't know. But, uh, you can still get it. it from what I play, I haven't played all of it, but I played a little bit of it, maybe, like, half an hour. It's a great game. It's a fantastic remake, even though I didn't really play the original. I do have the original on 3DS, because it was on my Nintendo as a reward, and I really don't want anything else on there. I already have it, so... I just sort of got that, and uh, I played a little bit, it was okay. Anyway, through here, uh, this is where we, this, this has been, I came to this area a long, like, one of, in, bleh. when I first started playing the game, I came to this area and I thought it was just gorgeous, with the water and these mushrooms here, and I thought it was just an amazing area. I thought I did have to go up here to, to get something or continue, but no, not that open, unfortunately. This is a super heated area, so obviously you can't go this way early on in the game, which is a good way to guide people. And then you can just block this wall. Actually, is there something over there? Is there Charizard lore? Uh, either way, there's a power bomb over here. Oh, there's Charizard lore over here, okay. I still feel like there's something else over there, but I'm not sure. Another thing that was mentioned in the comments, or at least somewhat uh, brought up by someone. I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. You comment a lot, from what I understand, or from what I... I don't even know what I'm saying anymore, but um, the Trovis Lore in the Wii version, or in, I think by extension the PAL version of the game, was rewritten to be a bit more legible, or a bit more understandable uh, to people, because the Trovis Lore in the original GameCube version was kind of confusing in terms of its wording. Uh, again, I haven't read the actual Trovis Lore in the GameCube version for ages, I'm not even really reading them here to be honest with you. I haven't read them in a long time, so I don't remember any exact changes that I can point out or anything. Uh, but there's probably some list of changes somewhere on the internet you can find. Uh, through here in this room, there's a missile expansion. What is this room's name? The Training Chamber Access. Uh, just through some routes. Again, listen for the hum of missile expansions, and I think energy tanks make it as well uh, to, see, uh, to find out where things are going to be. And now... We have our third required Chozo ghost fight of the game, of the video, of the game. This is like our fourth or fifth? Yeah, probably fifth, because we had one in the place for Flagra, and then one with the extra riser, or one pass getting the extra riser. So, where the fuck? The movements are very strange sometimes. They just go through the floor. I mean, they are ghosts, to be fair. They can do that. It's well within their right, but it's annoying. And also, it looks weird. Might just look weird because it's through the extra riser, though. I'm glad the extra riser is more helpful in this game than it was in Super Metroid. Because in Super Metroid, it just, uh... You had to stop and then look around at walls and stuff to find out if it was breakable. And basically do that in every single room if you're going to 100% the game without a guide. Which, ugh. <laughs> that's a pain. But uh, in this game, it's much better. I also want to commend Super Metroid, by the way. I thought of this uh, a couple days ago. Uh, that it's not just a s remake of Super Metroid, but in 3D. Like a lot, like, well, I was going to say a lot of N64 games back uh, in the day were. That's actually more of a thing they did on the SNES, to be honest with you. Um, a lot of SNES games, if you look at them, are just like NES games remade. Like Super Castlevania 4 is very similar to Castlevania 1. Super Metroid is very similar to Metroid 1. Earthbound is very similar to Mother 1. Um, a lot of SNES games are just very similar to, like, 
their NES counterparts are supposed to be remakes and remasters because of the significantly more powerful hardware. Um, and also just better design ideas at that point because like, the difference between Super Metroid and the original Metroid is night and day. I would say the same with Earthbound and Mother 1 because Mother 1 is kind of blech, but... Um, yeah, a lot like the main game that comes to mind when it's like 3D ga uh, game that's very similar to SNES game is Ocarina of Time, which of course has its own identity to some degree, but in others it's very much a very, uh, sort of remake of A Link to the Past, just in 3D with its plot, with its goal. Uh, it's a great game, Ocarina of Time. It's my second favorite 3D Zelda game, but I will never say it, it isn't uh, very familiar to. Uh, link to the past. Anyway, we have to go to the Magma Caverns. Actually, the best way to go is again this way. Uh, did we get everything? I'm trying to remember. I think we pretty much got everything we could. Um, I can't remember if we've missed anything really or not. So far, I feel like we haven't, but I can't remember. Hopefully, we haven't because I don't want to have to go all around the world at the end of the game to get one thing. Uh, not that I should have to look for anything we missed because I'm keeping track of what we have and haven't gotten but still I'd rather not do that I'd rather go back for as little as possible because that makes for a better flowing series so Magma Caverns is around this way for some reason I'm getting more turned around with the world in this than I am probably because I'm having to think of commenting as well I'm constantly second guessing like going the right way because people are watching me and I, I need to do perfectly yeah it's stuff this way I'm pretty sure I always forget if this leads to Magma Caverns as well, or just the place where you fought the uh, Incinerator Drone, because I've played the beginning of this game so many times that um, the, the fact this leads to the Incinerator Drone is just like engraved in me, and I always think it only leads to the Incinerator Drone. Which it doesn't, because I just came from here. <laughs> so it's sort of backtracking here, right? No, what? Wait. Oh. Where the hell is the entrance to Magmore then? Oh. Oh, right, because you go. What? I don't know. Is there an entrance to Magmore over here then? Hold on, I'm gonna go to Magmore Caverns. <laughs> okay, so now we're going the right path to the Magmore Caverns. I got really turned around there thinking that path went there. Uh, I don't know why I thought that. But whatever. Also, speaking of items that uh, we apparently missed while I was editing one, apparently we didn't get this? Oh. We didn't. Okay. Well, yeah, there's there's a missile expansion in this room through that tunnel. Um. Okay, I. Th How did I not get that? Oh, well, I guess you have to come back here at the morph ball at some point to get it, don't you? Yeah, I guess that's how. But. I'm surprised I didn't, because I came back for that one missile expansion in the, uh... Well, where we started this cut from. And I got that, so... That's... Kind of weird I didn't get that, but whatever, at least we got it now. I, was, I thought it was a mistake in it when I was editing. Like, oh, no, I got that. There's no way I didn't get that. That's, like, one of the easiest ones to get. It's by how I missed it. Other than that... I don't think we missed anything. That's the only one I was thinking I might have missed, actually. But anyway, now we're actually going to Magma Caverns. I I was going to say I don't remember the last time we were here, but... Well, I, well, I don't. It probably was not that long ago. Oh, I, I, okay, those are Shriek Bats as well. I was like, what? I thought, what are those then? If those are the Shriek Bats here, there's two sets. Did I even... I guess I got that save point. I must have... What's going on with this? For some reason, my uh, Wii remote is just flicking to the top of the screen, the top left of the screen, and I don't know why. Um, I'm directly in front of the sensor bar, and I, I have no idea. Hopefully, it doesn't happen too much. Anyway, it's going to be coming back to this room, because actually, we need to blast down that pillar to get a Chozo artifact. Very non, very uh, anticlimactic there, just getting one, but yeah. This has been here since the beginning of the game. You can technically get it, I think, on your first visit here to the Chozo, the Magma Caverns. But, uh, you need the space jump to get it, I'm pretty sure. Or at least you need to be very specific with your jump if you don't use the space jump. 
So it's best to just get it. Um, the best time to get it really is when you're going back to get the uh, boost ball to go fight the Shigoth. I keep forgetting names this episode, I'm sorry, so I keep pausing. But uh, yeah, that's kind of the best time to get it, but there's a faster path uh, regardless, so I didn't do it this episode. Usually I would, or this playthrough rather. Usually I would actually just go that way to get the Chozo Artifact. But... Or sorry, no, when you're going back to the Space Jump, then on your way back to Magmore. Or Fendron, whatever. I completely fucked that up. When you, when you get the Boost Ball, and you go back to Talon Overworld to get the... Uh, space Jump, after you get that, it's a good time to go back through Magmore that way to get the... Um... Get that Chozo Artifact without having to really backtrack all that much. You're taking a slightly longer path um, through the or to get back to Fendrana, but overall it's a little bit faster because there's, you're getting the Chozo Artifact that much earlier. You don't have to worry about getting it later. At least I feel like you are. At least I feel better getting it earlier than I do later because I don't know why wouldn't I? Then I won't forget it later and be like, what Chozo Artifact didn't I get? Then yeah. Anyway, there's space pipes in this room now. Not for long, but there are there they are in this room. Luckily we're super missile, so I don't really have to deal with anyone. But in this room, if we bomb in the middle of this uh pathway, whatever, we can get a uh missile uh, ice beam upgrade. Similar to the wave buster, the super missiles, we get the ice spreader. Which is um kinda helpful. Uses 10 missiles to shoot a giant thing of ice, which freezes or stuns enemies, but the ice beam charge shot does that anyway. Uh, is there anything about to get this way? Yes, there definitely is. Uh, but there's also... Hold on. We're gonna go this way first, because there is a thing we need to get over here. Uh, in the last room. I was thinking we were gonna go back there first place, but I always get turned around in that room and not know exactly which way is which so that's why that happened but uh you can there's two items in the screen we can get one is very important the other who is shooting at me by a space flyer space pirate flying unit whatever um where is the jump up here jesus yeah there they are uh there's two items you can get here one is a choice of artifact the other is an upgrade you can get the choice of artifact as soon as you get the boost ball but the upgrade you need the power bombs to get which is why i waited until now to go and get the Chozo Artifact because I wanted to do it all at once. That, I feel like that should not have hit you, but I'm not gonna complain. Did I already elevate this bridge? We did not. I'm forgetting what I have and have not done. But yeah, basically we need to use the boost ball to get this bridge, but I guess we also need the space jump technically, but mostly you just need the boost ball. And uh, you can just extend the bridge and follow this pathway over to this door. Where is the door? Is it in here? Such a long pathway for seemingly no reason. And in the arms of a Chozo statue, we have whatever Chozo artifact that says. I can't remember the name or the number. I can never remember those. Like, okay, cool. And while we're in here, if we power bomb at the base here, because you know, just destroy ancient artifacts, it's fine. Samus has blown up how many planets with that stuff on it? We get a power bomb expansion for using a power bomb. This seems to happen a lot in Metroid games, where you use a power bomb to get a power bomb expansion. You also get so little power bombs throughout each game that uh, they're a kind of a precious commodity. Where are we going? We need to go to there. Oh, actually, where are we going? No, no, whatever. We need to go back, right? Okay, this map can be really confusing sometimes. This is... Okay. <laughs> now that I have my bearings. Okay, because that's where we came from. Okay. I understand where we're going now. We need to go to the geothermal... Motherfucking fire. <laughs> to the geothermal core to get the next beam. Which will be the end of that. We already have all of our visors. We just need to get the next beam. But yeah. Uh, what else is there to talk about? Oh, uh, the new 3DS. 
I want to talk about that because I'm a big fan of the color purple. Uh, if you haven't noticed, which I don't know really how you would considering I haven't really done all that much with it. Uh, the only thing is like the sort of logo I have on my thumbnails and in my profile. On, is it in my profile picture? No, it's not. Maybe. I can't remember actually right now. I usually try to like theme my name after a certain game I'm doing, but... Um, yeah, that, that exists and it's purple, sort of. So, that's like the only place it exists on my channel though, unfortunately. It needs to exist more. I need to use more purple. It's the best color, like factually, but... That's my tyrant aside with that. Uh, there's a new 3DS coming out that has a galaxy look on it, like a, not like a Super Mario Galaxy, but a just literal galaxy look on it. It looks so good, but I already have a new 3DS, and I, I don't want to sell that one to get that one, because, uh... <laughs> I have to transfer the data, I also, like, sell it in general, ship it. Just, ugh, I don't want to do that. It's a pain. I'm not giving it away for free, either, because... I spent money on it. I don't want. I don't want to just give that away for free. So, guess I'm losing on a really, really cool 3DS style. That's why I always hate getting it. I shouldn't have gotten it as soon as it came out. But the only one that existed really when it came out, the new 3DS, was the Majora's Mask style, and I think that sold out. And I didn't really care because I didn't really care for the way it looked all that much. It looked okay, but. Like, it's not fair, because America always gets the worst styles, usually, when something comes out. Um, and by that, I really just mean, I can't think of any other example but the new 3DS. Because the new 3DS in Japan got a cool, deep blue color that looked really great, and I would have loved to get that instead of the just normal black one. Because I didn't want to get the red one, because it, I don't know, see, it looked distracting to me. I didn't want to get that, because... <clears throat> Because it looked like it would just be distracting when I'm playing a game. And I was going to be playing that a lot because Xenoblade came out. And that's pretty much why I got a new 3DS for Xenoblade Chronicles 3D. Which is a great game, by the way. Definitely get that. Um, especially if you can't get the Wii version or don't have time to sit down and motherfucking shit! Especially if you don't have time to play through a 100 hour game on a console. Xenoblade 3D is a great alternative. Um, it does have some issues compared to the Wii version, though I haven't actually finished the Wii version. I have it on the Virtual Console. Um, I have seen... New... Are you fucking... Ah! As I was saying... The 3DS version has some frame rate issues in, um, battles occasionally. I can think of one specific battle where the frame rate dips considerably. Not to, like, a point of unplaying, or, like, unplayability, but to the point where you definitely do notice it. Uh, it's a, it's amazing they still got that game to run though on that thing, even if it is the new 3DS. Um, but the game does look worse. But uh, to me, not that much. Maybe it's because I played it first. But even playing the Wii version, like the Wii version was never the most graphically impressive game. Just in art style, it was amazing. And the 3DS version is still the same way in a lot of ways. Uh, Satoa Marsh does look worse, especially at night, because there's less mist floating around. But other than that, I mean, it looks, looks pretty good to me. Anyway, that's the plasma beam. It took fucking forever to get it, because I kept falling. <laughs> but whatever, it's fine. Another game I've been playing a lot recently uh, is Fire Emblem Fates. Which, hold on. Can I go over there? Okay. That is that, is that way. <laughs> Uh, Fire Emblem Fates. I've finished Conquest and Birthright. Uh, I personally preferred Birthright. That's a lie. I prefer Conquest. Because I thought the story was more interesting. I also thought the chapters were more fun, even if they were harder. I just prefer classic Fire Emblem. What the fuck is going on with my pointer? I just prefer classic Fire Emblem to the Awakening style of game. Not that Awakening is bad, or Birthright's bad. Birthright and Awakening are fantastic games. Uh, but I prefer things like 7, and, uh, I was gonna say 6, but nah. 4, I played a little bit of Final 4, and that's really, really good. I think that, that's the one, I think that's the one at least that introduced the weapon system. I am getting my numbers wrong, but I played the one that introduced the weapon triangle, and, uh, that was fantastic, a little bit of, uh, the one I played. 
I need to play more of the Japanese Fire Emblem games, but it's it's hard to to play them, but obviously because they're in Japan, not America, which is upsetting. Japan's getting them on like the virtual console for the 3DS, and the, even though we got some, not even the Wii, and that's like saying it in a derogatory manner, but the we got some, we got uh, very little, which is upsetting. I wish we'd gotten more, but whatever. Hopefully one day they'll at least give us the Japanese versions. It, I don't even care at this point they translate them. I just want them. Anyway, uh, we're back in the phase on mines, and there is a thing over here. We, I think we jump over here in Parabon. Yeah, there we go. That's the most expansion there. That was the one I always missed playing the game originally because I just completely didn't. I didn't even know it was there. It's pretty well hidden, all things considered. We have plasma troopers here, which can't really see it because of reasons. But, uh, you know, there it is. I don't know exactly how they, whoops, they reverse engineered the plasma beam when it was hidden away in a I don't know how they reverse engineered any of our weapons, considering the plasma beam in this game is unique in it. Okay, I don't know what the fuck happened to him. And that's heat based. In the other games, it was just like. This is a beam that goes through enemies. Not it wasn't heat based or anything. I mean, as far as we knew, maybe it was. Who knows? But maybe Sam, why am I having a problem? Just fucking falling in this episode. What is going on? This needs to stop. I need to do better. But uh, the last thing we're gonna get in this episode is in the phase on mines. Well, oh, it's a platform. I couldn't see it. Um, it's also in the phase on mines. It's also for the plasma beam. You can probably guess what it's gonna be. This motherfucker up here. You you need to die, good sir. Because you're gonna be a pain in my neck when I go through this next section. If you knock them into the phase on, you can um they'll die. <laughs> they they will die if they go if they get knocked into the phase on. It's entirely what I was trying to say. But it just couldn't. So if you, if you can do that, then it's good. Can I can please, please, thank you. <laughs> you just destroy that Bendesium. Bendesium is what you destroy with power bombs. If you ever see that and scan it in the world, it is a power bomb. Just, you need to destroy with power bombs. God, I cannot like articulate my words today for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on, but it's a problem. So we need to head back a little bit. Till the yes, I understand it cannot be open. Thank you. I don't know what's going on with my pointer. <laughs> so it is teleporting around. We need to go back to a thing we can destroy with power bombs. How many pawns do we have? Shit. Because <laughs> I could use one more, but I don't know if I can get one easily. That's upsetting. I kind of wish power bombs were more in stock. I was gonna say I wish Metroid had the thing with um, that like a uh, link between worlds did, where you get you don't get amount of items, you just get more stamina basically, or you just have stamina to use items with. But I think that wouldn't really work with Metroid. I think that would be very, very bad actually. And also, I don't know how the fuck they'd handle um, like expansions at that point. So yeah, probably not a good idea. It was just sort of on the mind, and I realized it was fucking terrible. Off I did Nintendo should never ever do for Metroid. Should I talk about Federation Force? Is that a good idea? Or will this video get a million dislikes for really no reason? Um, not that I think Federation Force looks great. Uh, for the record, if no one uh, is keeping up with it, which uh, I don't know how you would considering, or wouldn't rather considering there's like reviews everywhere for it and everyone's either mad or indifferent about it basically. Um, but Federation Force is the new quote-unquote Metroid game, I suppose, for the 3DS that's very team-based, and it focuses on the Galactic Federation, and it's chibi team-based shooter, and a lot of people hate it, based on the fact that it's a chibi team-based shooter. Um, I can understand that, especially considering the timing, this is not a good time to make Metroid games. E3 2015 for Nintendo, I will always say, the games they showed off... For the most part, we're fine. Except for Animal Crossing and Festival. Fuck that. 
But other than that, they were mostly fine games. Just, it wasn't, like, you don't announce that stuff at E3. That's not the kind of stuff that we expect at E3. We expect big announcements and things that will really in surprise us and impress us. We don't expect Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. We expect Animal Crossing for the Wii U. Not that's. I was so hopeful when they showed that off. Pretty much everyone was so hopeful when they showed that off. Like, oh my god, Animal Crossing for the Wii U! And then it's a board game. And it looks atrocious. Like, literally the worst thing I've ever invented. <sighs> but yeah. That game's terrible. I haven't played it because it's not free. <laughs> um, I thought it was free at the eShop. I guess at some point they uh, removed it from the eShop for free. Because I own one Animal Crossing Amiibo. My brother bought one. And I was, we were just going to play it just to try it out. But apparently they removed it from the eShop. You can't download it for free anymore, which is super upsetting. Because I would give it a shot, I guess. I know I hate it because it's basically like even worse Mario Party um, 9 and 10, it's even worse than those, but I don't know, It maybe it wouldn't be the worst thing if I gave it a shot. It'd still be bad, but maybe not the worst thing. It can't be the worst thing, because Paper Mario Sticker Star still exists. At that point, I guess I should talk about Color Splash either, because not only will that make other people angry, it will make me angry, and I don't think we really want that. Especially since we're going to be ending the episode in just a moment. Because past this plasma green door is going to be the most useless beam power-up ever in this game. Or really me in any other Metroid game. I'm not really sure. Or any other Metroid Prime game. It's the flamethrower. Which is as it sounds. But it takes... How many missiles to activate? I guess we don't know. Let's find out, huh? So that. Let's find out how many missiles it takes to activate. Takes 10 missiles to activate and does a, and drains one missile per second past that and does damage. But the wave buster is so much better, and I don't know why you'd use the flamethrower. I mean, I guess if it's immune to the wave buster, maybe, but at that point, just use the normal buster, normal um, beam cannon. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this episode. I'm gonna try and resolve this pointer issue because I don't know what's going on with that. And I will see you next time. Let's play Metroid Prime. See you then. Oh, my God.